Blessings to you. Today is Tuesday, March 26, 2024. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Um, we're going to talk today about sin and the body of Christ. And is there a cost for our sins? I mean, we're forgiven by Jesus. He has removed us from the curse of the law of sin and death. And now we're in freedom. And is there a cost for our sin? Do we, do we have to bear our sin anymore? And I'll share in a moment why, that, why I'm sharing or, or talking on this topic. Why don't we get started? Welcome to the Gospel According to John Campbell. My name is John Campbell. and uh, If you'd like to find more videos, you can follow the ticker tape here. Just go to YouTube at Gospel According to John Campbell. You can like and subscribe. I need to get a nice little little click and, and bell for, for that. Um, and, and, and there are plenty of videos, videos there. I feel led by the Holy Spirit, but led by our Father to share videos to help you as a brother or a sister, you who are interested in finding out more about Jesus so that you can walk in more obedience, preparing your way for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, we all can feel something is a little different in the world now. We can all feel that the world is moving into a, a new time and the Bible is coming alive. The Bible and the truth of the Bible is coming alive in all things that it says. And when I was reading the scriptures today, I I came across this, this scripture. Let's take a look. When a crime is not punished quickly, people feel it is safe to do wrong. But even though a person sins a hundred times and still lives a long time, I know that those who fear God will be better off. The wicked will not prosper, for they do not fear God. Their days will never grow long in the evening shadows. Okay. You know, for a lot of us, we're in churches now, and sometimes it seems as though you can live a, a wonderful life and sin is not really a pressing issue. Sin is not really a, a thing where, 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 the, where the church now is focused on. We're focused on living a good life, prospering, but not necessarily in transformation, in stopping sin. Because we're saved by the blood of Jesus, we can worship in our sins being removed from us as far as the east is from the the west. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, there's, I think there's more to it. I think that this scripture that I just shared here, we feel as though because sins are not punished quickly, it is safe to keep on doing wrong. Let's say a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this stream, those who are drawn to the stream may be encouraged to really reflect on their relationship with you, reflect on the consequence of sin, reflect and know that nothing that comes from your mouth, nothing that you have said or spoken shall return void, that everything that you have spoken through your prophets, apostles, those carried by the Holy Spirit will be fulfilled, and that you, um, you stand against sin. And you desire for us to walk in righteousness. We know your word says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So I pray you'd help those who are, who are, who are needing freedom. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, I have a, a, a thought. So today, you know, we're in kind of the, we, we can feel the last days of the church. We can feel that we are in a time where people are wrestling with who Jesus is, wrestling with who the church is. There's so many different denominations and beliefs. There's new doctrines and beliefs coming. And now is a time for us to really contend with the faith. And how do we do that? 
we read the Bible. It's why I leave a lot of scriptures here for you to search out for yourself. Uh, you know, in the Bible, the Bereans uh, uh, in Acts chapter 17 were a people. When they heard the word, they looked at the scriptures to make sure that what was being told to them was true. I have no heaven or hell to put you in. I am just sharing the word as a believer, as a, a baptized believer in Christ Jesus. And, and I pray, I pray that this word encourages you wherever you are on your journey. It's not between me and you. It's between you and God. And he has sent one Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's time now for us to be responsible and take responsibility for our lives, to know what the Bible says. Um, with that said, you know, I just kind of feel led to go to the scripture now. I wasn't planning to. So why don't I, I do that? We're going to go to Matthew chapter 7. And I'll read, um, let's let's go to verse 21. I'm, I'm attempting to go how long I can without my glasses. But let's see, a little awkward with these headphones. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, well, a lot of people cry out, Lord, Lord. But not everyone who calls to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. In judge, on judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast, it, cast out demons in your name. Wow. And perform many miracles in your name. Incredible. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. You who break God's laws. You know, other translations says you workers of iniquity, which means willful sin, or you lawbreakers. But they perform miracles. <laughs> I mean, they casted out demons. Wow. Surely they're going to make it in. And we see, you know, there is something to be said that we need to make sure that we are keeping God's laws. That this scripture here, when a crime is not punished quickly, people feel it's safe to do wrong. That those believers that casted out demons, those believers that performed miracles, who called and did many wonderful things for Jesus, those people, they didn't understand that the punishment would come for willful sin. Willful sin gets punished. And so today, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. We are in churches where we no longer know each other deep enough and intimately enough to ask, to speak, to see whether we are walking in sin. We don't know what sin is. We don't even know what sin is. We're in a very strange time with the corporate larger church. And if we're going to remain in Christ and be who he wants, we need to start a war against sin. We need to say that, no, no, you're not cool for sinning. It's not okay to be the cool believer, Christian, who sins. That sin has a consequence. Okay, well, let's take a look some more. So the Bible says here in Romans chapter 6, verse 22 to 23. And, you know, the point I'm going to share here is that sin leads to death. As you can see the heading, sin leads to death in a person, a church, a nation, a world. Let's take a look. But, no, but now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you, now you do those things which lead to holiness and result in eternal life. Oh, amen. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's put these glasses on. <laughs> Who are we fooling? But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a free gift, but the wages of sin is death is death. Sin, when it comes in, uh, into us, we need to master it. You know, uh, I feel called to another scripture here. Let's, let's, let's go here. And I'm going to go to Genesis chapter one. Oh no, not chapter one. Well, we'll, 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 let's skip ahead. Genesis chapter four. 
And we're going to read about Cain and Abel. I've probably read this if you follow my stream. I keep coming back to this one. But now Adam and had sexual relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, With the Lord's help I have produced a man. Later she gave birth to, her bro to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd, while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of the crops as a gift to, to the Lord, Yahweh, the Most High. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. You know, that's like prophetic right there. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected, or shall we say, <laughs> rejected. Why are you so angry? The Lord, or our Heavenly Father, asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right, but if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and master it. Let's see if that's what he did. Did Cain do that? One day Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out to the fields. And while they were in the fields, Cain attacked his brother, Abel, and killed him. Okay. Sin has a cost. Sin enters into us when we're tempted. We can be tempted with a sin. It starts off small or seemingly small. Abel gave a sacrifice. Cain gave a sacrifice. Cain felt like, man, I'm rejected. I, you're, not, you're, you're not happy with my sacrifice. And God pointed out to him that if you do what is right, I will absolutely accept you. It was that you did not give the best. And I've created you and created this world. And I need, I require it requires that you give the best. That's a better sacrifice. And that's a lesson for us even today as believers. So, but Cain, he, that, that anger stirred in him, that anger stirred in him and it led to him murdering his brother. You know, Jesus said, you have heard it said, uh, 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 do not murder. But he said, anyone who's angry at his brother in the kingdom of God, if you're angry at his brother, that, that, uh, you should be in danger of the, the fires of hell because the spirit, that little spirit, that sin begins with something small, something, a small temptation that grows into the sin grows and the sin grows to death where eventually the mark of death had to be placed on Cain and eventually Cain did die. Let's take a look at sin and temptation. See, we can feel like, okay, well, these sins, I can't control it. But the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 13 to 15, And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God has never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. When sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. You know, the Bible says without holiness, no one can see the Lord. When sin is allowed to grow in our lives, it gives birth to death. When sin, okay, so I, I, I mentioned this heading, sin can lead to death in a person a church, a nation, and a world. Well, what, okay, what does that, what does that mean? Sin can lead to death in your life. Let's give an example. So you're tempted. You know, it's a summertime, a man or a woman, you see an attractive person pass by. A man, you see an attractive woman pass by. You are tempted to turn and look. You're tempted. You know you should not, but you, but you are tempted. We are all tempted. Okay, you don't know the woman, you don't know her her personality. You don't. You just are attracted to her body. And today, the way most people dress is very provocative, revealing, and sexual. So it's easy to be tempted. If you go to the gym, it's easy to be tempted. You go to restaurants, it's easy to be tempted. 
Okay, so at, what it begins is it begins with, I'll, I'll just take a quick look. I'll do a second look. And then a second look after that. And that sin of lust begins to grow. You've opened the door to that sin. You open it, and as it grows, you begin to want to look more. Now you're, you're lurking. Now you're putting on the sunglasses so no one can see you lurking. Now you're watching shows, on, whether on streaming sites, Netflix, and you're looking for the shows that are going to show you sexual things. And you now you're getting used to that, and now you're looking for the sh for not just shows, but you're looking for porn. And now, not just that, you're leading to porn and masturbation. It's leading you to then look and say, "I want to." Uh, you're a believer. You know that your sin is sexual immorality outside. Sex outside of marriage is not is a sin. We know that, but you're feeling like I want to have a boyfriend girlfriend. I want. To experience sex outside of marriage and the sex oh, okay now i want to have multiple lovers oh now i'm looking at at kind of sexual situations that are outside of even what would seem normal to me to begin with and it can lead to affairs it can lead to it can lead to um different perversions in uh, of sex, it could be outside of like homosexuality, pedophilia. When we open the door, I'm just giving an example of, of lust because all of us are tempted with lust, and lust can grow. Eventually, that sin can grow to a point where it destroys our life, maybe destroys the reputation, and maybe we get a disease and it destroys our life. Maybe it creates anger and the retribution destroys our life. But sin leads to death. But in the church today, we almost believe Jesus forgives that everybody struggles with sin. Just pray and Jesus will forgive you. But your life is suffering the consequences of that sin. Your marriage is suffering because you cannot share that you're chronically in porn or masturbation. You, 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 your confidence as a believer is suffering because you are, you, you're, you're leading or you're telling the Bible, but you're looking at porn and you feel ashamed. The shame, this is a tool of the devil because we've let this in. And the Bible says we need to confess our sins to be healed, but we're so ashamed. We're like, we can't, we can't forgive. We can't confess this. Oh no, people will, will hate us. And so we continue to walk in iniquity and become workers of iniquity. And this is common for us in the church today. This is common for us to allow people to, we're, we're, we're amongst, but we're not close, we're not in each other's lives, to say no, no more sin. It leads to your death. And it's an indication of the last day church. Now, I, I want to say, um, well, let's take a look. Last day church here, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse one to five. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will, be, will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and, and unforgiving. They will slander uh, others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will behave, betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like this. You know, another translation says, they shall have a form of godliness but deny the power. Okay, many churches are like this, family. Many groups of, of, of believers, whether Torah followers or Israelite followers or Christian followers, Catholic, Protestant, Seventh-day, many churches are like this. We know. We know that. And it's, it, it's to the point where if you are striving to be righteous and to break free, it can feel like a fight even in the body of Christ. We have to see that there will be an accounting 
for these sins. And that unless someone is determined to come out of them, unless someone is determined to leave sin behind, that they will face Jesus who says, I do not know you. Well, why would Jesus not know you? Why is that? Okay, we're going to take a look. I'm going to scroll up here. I think I passed the scripture. This is why. Jesus, his body is connected to him. He has died for us. For Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 29. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There's no longer Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ... You are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. See, when we are in Christ, we've repented and been baptized in Jesus. We are clothed in Christ. And when he sees us, he sees Jesus. When God sees us, he sees Jesus. But, you know, there's a thing. We have to, if we're going to... um, Walk in Christ. I feel another scripture coming. I'm going to clarify. If we're going to walk in Christ, then we need to recognize that we need to be holy. This is what God says in the past. My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. See, Jesus says, I never knew you. But he says, my people. So there's a covenant here. But they're being destroyed because they don't know me. Since you priests refuse to know me to know his word, to refuse to recognize, I refuse to recognize you as my priest. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. See, God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we choose to sin, he cannot recognize us as the body of Christ, which is a priesthood. He cannot recognize us to be the body of Jesus Christ, who Uh, Jesus has a work, and when we obey him, we are in him. We are abiding in him. We're living in him. But today, we are feeling as though we can live in sin, but at the same time, we can live in Christ. That we can be in the world, but not of the world. Revelations chapter uh, uh, 3 talks about this. And, you know, again, the Holy Spirit's speaking to me, so I'm going to scroll outside my, my notes and go ahead. So let's scroll up. We're going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. And I think it's around 15. Let's see here. Um, okay. I uh, write this letter to the angel of the church of Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor nor cold. I wish you were one or the other, but since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. He's speaking about their spiritual reality. So I advise you to buy gold from me, Gold that is purified by fire, righteousness that comes through determination, persecution, by, by, by perseverance. Okay. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me so you will not be shamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes that you'll be able to see. You know, when he says shame for your, your nakedness, because if we're not obeying what Jesus says, then we're not clothed in Jesus. Yes, oh, we've been, we've been baptized and, 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 and Jesus is guiding our life. But if we refuse, if we deliberately continue willfully disobey Jesus, we cannot be his priest. We cannot be his priest. And that grace is not given to those who willfully disobey. Okay, Grace is given to those who obey. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 26, dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only a terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. If we're like, well, I don't care what Jesus says, I'm going to have 
as much sex as I want outside of marriage. I don't care what God says. I will get drunk, get high. I'm going to live my life the way I want. Do what I want. That's what I'm going to do. If that's your thing, then no, you're not. You're no longer in Christ. Just like the the Israelites who refused, they they made a covenant with God on the mountain. They were they went through the Red Sea and were delivered, but so many died in the wilderness, not going in with Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus into the promised land. See, we want to go in our lives into the promised land that God has for us in eternal life. We're not living for this life. We're living for the life to come. So how do we how do we do that? Let's let's talk about. Jesus gives us the power. There's a song called Jesus Got the Power. Uh, you know on this on this channel I'll probably I'm, I guess I'll need to do a rendition. But we need to get power for the kingdom of God is not just of a, a, a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. It is power. The kingdom of God is power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome sin, to break away from sin, to remove demonic strongholds of sin. That's what power is. And we have that power in Jesus' name when we ask for the Holy Spirit. Okay, more more coming. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. This is what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 to the apostles just before he left. He said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you can see in Mark chapter 16, what happens? You can cast out devils. What, what devils are those? Well, that's the lust we talked about. That's the shame. That's the fear. That's the anger that some of you struggle with, okay? That's the, the depression that, that, that can't go away. Those are spirits because we're not given to a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind, of boldness. See, spirits, we have bodies that inhabit spirits, and those spirits enter your body through righteous acts, when we obey God's Holy Spirit, we walk in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. We make doorways for the Holy Spirit to present uh, and to work in us as we make a pledge to Jesus. But also it works our flesh, our bodies. We can also inhabit demonic holds of anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, rejection. Oh, yes. And our churches are full of believers who want to serve God and yet still walking in those spirits. So we need power to overcome the works of the devil. For the Bible says that the fear is of the devil. We can't walk in sin, family. We have to walk in love and the expressions of love. So how do we get the power? We can get power if we Ask and, and and asking is asking with shameless abandon to cry out like blind Bartimaeus, save me, save me. Let's read here, Luke chapter eleven verse nine. And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. Is that true, family? Is Jesus's words true? Well, are you asking? Let's keep looking. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if you ask, if your children ask you for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Come on. Come on, fathers. Or if they ask for a, an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, come now, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How, how much? Heavenly Father, he's your Father. Well, we are baptized into Christ. God becomes our Father. But he still says you can ask for the Holy Spirit. Interesting. You can ask for power. Interesting. I know many people in our, our churches were like, well, we, well, these gifts are all done away with. They're done away for, with, for you because you've not asked. Because Jesus said to ask and you're not obeying him. You're not obeying him. Now, I, for a time in my life, did not ask. And I lived and fought sin by my willpower. <laughs> okay. And I didn't do very well. 
But when I started asking and I cried out and I sought him and I said, there is power. There is, I want the same power that I see in the first century church. I want to walk with that power that Jesus said. And I asked, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And he led me. He led me to people who, who walked in the Holy Spirit. And I asked and I received anointing, power, power. I do not struggle with the sins I did before, with lust, with doubt, with shame. Uh, is, is that I never struggle with it? No, family, I'm not going to tell you. I never struggle. I'm never tempted. I'm saying I'm a different believer because I have power. Oh, I knew, I knew the Bible before. I'm a 50, I'm in my 50s. And I knew the Bible in my 20s. And I was trying. But I was trying with a form of godliness. That, but I denied the power. I knew what Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know some of you hearing me here. I hope you're, you're really hearing me. You believe that Jesus casted out demons. Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus gives power over sin. And yet you're, you're, you're struggling. You're struggling with porn. You're struggling to, to not get free. You're struggling to share your faith. You're struggling to obey God with all your heart. You're struggling to love your wife or, 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 or respect your husband. <laughs> You're struggling to, to, to accept the words of God. We are in times where the church is lukewarm. We are in times where the Bible says in the last days, there shall be a great falling away. And we need power to overcome. We need power of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe Jesus? Does Jesus want you to walk in that power? Does Jesus want you to ask for the Holy Spirit? Does Jesus want you to give up sin? Yes. Well, those who live for him will live with him in glory. You know, I'm going to close with this. And again, I said, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, went to the kingdom, but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. You see Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, uh, 23. You can see the whole thing there. And I, let me talk to you, family. We're in a time where we're tolerating sin. We feel as though sin is okay. We see our leaders struggling with sins. We see... Uh, all of us struggling with sins. You know, sins of lust are just common among men in the church. We see that sins of unforgiveness or it's common. We see the will of God for our families. And we, we resist it. There are sisters. You, you, we, we see the will for God in, in our marriages to support, to reverence our husbands. We reject it. Men, we see the, the need for us to lead and provide for our, our, our fam families. We resist it. We see in churches that we are to worship with all our heart. And yet, you know, you would get barely a golf clap at church. But at a Raptors game, they don't tear the whole place down. And believers could be at both. So we're at a time now where we need to display the true church of Jesus. One that is holy, spotless, one that is devoted. And we shouldn't see that as an excuse or as, as a, something unattainable. No, we need to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus to be a spotless bride. And this is the only church that Jesus will accept. The other is vain religion, a form of godliness with no power. And that's how you know, because when you go there, you don't feel no power of God. And when you go there, you leave the same. But when we become the children of God, when people will come to us, when they're in the presence, they won't be moved by us. They'll feel Jesus and the power of Jesus, and they'll have freedom from sin. They won't have to suffer the consequences of sin, which is death. So the wages of sin is death. Sin is going to be called for. Sin is going to be uh, paid for. And yes, we are forgiven of our sins if we remain in Jesus and obey. 
if we serve him. And when we sin, we have we can ask for forgiveness. First uh, John chapter two, he is a atoning sacrifice for our sins. Hallelujah. We're forgiven of our sins. But there's a certain commitment that we need to have to being righteous. Okay, the righteous will live by his faith. And those who do that will live in eternal life. I love quoting this scripture, and I'll, I'll say, if my people, and that should be you, God's calling you, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I, our Heavenly Father, then I shall hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. We can have freedom from sin, family. And I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus that you overcome sin. You master it just as God said, and you move on to grace and eternal life. Bless you in Jesus' mighty, everlasting name. Lead me.